welcome to my channel. Subscribe and press the bell icon for more videos. this uh, pandemic. Very, very pleased to again uh, see you, uh, Prime Minister uh, Imran Khan. Last time we had a dialogue was in Davos. We did not expect that this uh, new decade was going to start um, this way. Thank you for joining us and also thank you for being willing to share with us how this uh, situation looks uh, from Islamabad, from Pakistan and the measures that you are uh, taking. Prime Minister, welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, well, experience of the developed world is completely different to what we are facing uh, in the developing world. Uh, and in countries like uh, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, uh, specifically the Indian subcontinent, our experience is, is, is somewhat different. Firstly, the, sort of the, the, the speed at which COVID-19 spread in Europe and in the United States it is we are not experiencing that same sort of speed on the other hand we are still uh, facing rising number of cases and we still haven't reached our peak here uh, but from day one the difference between say what what we've seen in europe and in the united states and in fact even in china the difference is that we had to face this twin challenge one was to stop, stem the growth of uh, the virus, so hence the lockdown. And but the the bigger challenge, and increasingly in our countries, the bigger challenge is how to mitigate the effects of lockdown on on our population with this rising poverty. Uh, to give uh, people an example of what we what we are facing in Pakistan, and I think it's the same sort of situation in India and possibly in Bangladesh. Uh, we in Pakistan we have uh, 25 million uh, workers who are either daily wages or get paid weekly or are self-employed so when we lock down and lock down like the whole of the world to stop the spread of the virus all these people became unemployed and when you are talking about 25 million workers you're talking about 25 million families and actually it has affected round about almost 120, 150 million people. And these 120 and 50 million people face stark poverty. They're, they're uh, unless uh, the, 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 the men or, or the women who were working, unless they work, the, they cannot feed their families. So what we did was, uh, and I'm very proud of my government, we came up with this cash transfer program. And we uh, touched 15 million families. So far we have touch 15 million families with uh, cash transfers and this is what's mitigated the effects of the lockdown but this is only a short-term solution so therefore despite the rising cases in our country we have decided to go uh, and and uh, ease the lockdown we have started to uh, open up our businesses our uh, construction industry uh, so that people can find employment because there's no way the government can uh, can uh, give handouts to so many people and because of this huge numbers of the informal economy w the only way we can uh, uh, reach our people is by by uh, allowing them to work so here we face this dilemma one we still have a problem of growing cases and we still have to be careful about uh, the spread of the virus but on the other hand unless we open up our economy we we have millions facing starvation uh, and this is not the problem faced in the in the Western countries, but the Western countries also face this problem, this balance between now saving the economy and at the same time worrying about even if the cases are going down, they're worrying about in case there's a spike. So the way forward, we have uh, this year, we have uh, as a as a country, as a nation, we realize that we have to live with this virus. Un at least until a, 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 a vaccine comes out, we feel that this year we just have to learn how to live with it and balance this. 
So to balance this, what we have, uh, what we have uh, raised a, a volunteer force of one million volunteers who will help the administration because the administration is already overburdened. The, the law enforcement agencies, they've become overburdened by trying to uh, impose the lockdown. So we decided that the only way is that have a volunteer force, let the ad administration do the normal work and the police while this, uh, this volunteer force goes and encourages people to not to, uh, uh, not to have gatherings. And when they go to work, have these SOPs so that they at least try and keep the social distancing. So um, this year we feel that uh, uh, we have a very tough year to balance this act. We have uh, suffered uh, economically. Just before this, uh, this COVID-19 hit us, we had managed to balance our uh, twin budgets the current account uh, deficit and the uh, fiscal deficit after a very painful series of reforms we are just about balanced and we're thinking of the economy of uh, growing and so it, it's hit at us at the worst time but what we feel is that uh, the coming coming year is not just a challenge for pakistan we all know it's a global challenge and uh, what we feel is that there's there has to be a, a lot more interaction between the countries in dealing with this challenge then has been so far understandably because when it hit the countries it's quite unprecedented the measures they took so the, every country looked inside became insular but I feel eventually it's uh, we are all connected and the response has to be global there has to be a, a, a way of picking up countries which are which are struggling right now and especially in the developing world I've spoken to uh, the Ethiopian Prime Minister, the, uh, the Egyptian President, the Nigerian Prime Minister. All of them are facing similar problems to what we are facing. Falling exports, the export orders have gone down because uh, obviously the, the, the problems uh, faced by the global community. But also additionally, we face the uh, problems of falling remittances. Our country depended a lot, a lot, of, a lot on remittances from the Gulf countries and because of Oil prices uh, crashing, that has had an effect uh, on, um, on um, uh, our workers, our, our remittances. So we are, I, I guess everyone is facing the challenges, but uh, we have geared up. Uh, economically, we've got our think, think tanks working on how we're going to deal with the coming uh, year. At the same time, we have, uh, we have a very good, uh, developed a system of a national command and control center and the whole idea is that every day we, we, the whole idea of the center is to balance the whole thing. They watch where the cases are growing, how they, we are going to deal with them, isolate individual areas where, where there is a fear of spreading, and at the same time, how we can keep our economy going. So I guess uh, this is what the world community faces. Thank you uh, so much, uh, Mr. Prime Minister, for sharing this. And uh, I think we are all uh, have a lot of respect uh, but if you can very shortly Prime Minister just in one minute say something about uh, the global uh, debt situation and also the special situation um, for developing countries um, because there is a discussion about the global plan here uh, you know G20 countries have come up with uh, 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 a debt relief uh, they've just come up with a policy of debt relief but it it needs to be there need to be more details and more work on this. But le let me just put it this way. A uh, lot of the developing world faces the situation where because of their debt servicing, their the fiscal space is contracted. They don't have enough space actually to cope with this, uh, this challenge that of health facilities because the biggest problem caused by COVID is our, it's overwhelmed the health facilities, the hospitals. So therefore, um, the reason why there should be a debt relief and the G20 has, uh, is looking into it uh, because we need that fiscal space now to divert resources towards health and also to environment. Uh, and unfortunately, right now, that space is not there. And as I said, I spoke to the uh, heads of Nigeria, Ethiopia and uh, Egypt. All of them face this uh, similar situation. Too. Thank you so much, uh, Prime Minister. And what you're really alluding to is kind of a bridge because there is an uh, imminent need 
for stimulus to make sure uh, that things are also working until uh, growth is back. I think this is a nice segue also to Sigrid Karg because Sigrid, uh, you're not only the trade minister of the Netherlands, but you're also the development minister.